We'll be beginning with morning prayer momentarily.
Good morning. On behalf of Trinity Anglican Church, I'd like to welcome you uh, to this, uh, I don't want to call it a production, because it's really just an exercise in morning prayer, as we do each week. You can follow along in your prayer book. Now, if you don't have a 1928 prayer book, which is the form that we're using, you can follow this service if you go to www.commonprayer.org and go to the service for morning prayer, and you'll be able to follow from there. Um, you will also be able to follow the communion service that will follow from that, which is also taken from the Book of Common Prayer that we use. On behalf of Trinity, I want to thank you, and uh, don't be afraid to say hello when you um, uh, log into the room, and uh, please join us. Rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart of God, thou wilt not despise. I will arise, and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven before thee, and am no longer worthy to be called thy son. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. <clears throat> Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like a lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no hell in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, come, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Lord, Amen. Praise you, the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us say the Benite on page nine. Responsibly, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth. And the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, 
and he made it. And his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down. And kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, he cometh to judge the earth. And with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. The psalm for today, the fourth Sunday of Lent, is Psalm 94, and that is found on page 457. 457. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth. Thou God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. Arise thou, judge of the world. And reward the proud after their deserving. O Lord, how long shall the ungodly? How long shall the ungodly triumph? How long shall all the wicked doers speak so disdainfully? And make such proud boasting. They smite down thy people, O Lord. And trouble thine heritage. They murder the widow and the stranger. And put the fatherless to death. And yet they say, Tush, the Lord shall not see. Neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Take ye, ye unwise among the people. O ye fools, when will ye understand? He that planted the ear shall he not hear. Or he that made the eye shall he not see. Or he that instructeth the heathen. It is he that teacheth man knowledge, shall not he punish. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man. But they are but vain. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord. And teachest him in thy law. That thou mayest give him patience in time of adversity. Until the pit be digged up for the ungodly. For the Lord will not fail his people. Neither will he forsake his inheritance. Until righteousness turn again unto judgment. All such as are true in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up with me against the wicked? Or who will take my part against the evildoers? If the Lord had not helped me. It had not failed, but my soul had been put to silence. But when I said, my foot hath slipped. Thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. In the multitude of the sorrows that I had in my heart. Thy comforts have refreshed my soul. Wilt thou have anything to do with the throne of wickedness? Which imagineth mischief as a law. They gather them together against the soul of the righteous. And condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my refuge. And my God is the strength of my confidence. He shall recompense them for their wickedness and destroy them in their own malice. Yea, the Lord our God shall destroy them. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We can have a New Testament lesson, or the Old Testament lesson. Here beginneth the 29th verse of the 47th chapter of the book of Genesis. And the time drew nigh that Israel must die. And he called his son Joseph and said unto him, if now I have found grace in thy sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt, but I will lie with my fathers, and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt, and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as thou hast said. And he said, Swear unto me. And he swore unto him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. And chapter 48, starting in verse 8. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons, and said, Who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, 
and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named upon them. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son. I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God, make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh, and he said, Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die. But God shall be with you, and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite, with my sword and with my bow. Here endeth the first lesson. Thanks be to God. Let's say together the Venite on page nine. Well, Venite, we did it. Oh, sorry. The Benedictus S on page 11. <clears throat> Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers. Praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty. Praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness. Praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim. Praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom. Praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven. Praised and exalted above all forever. The next lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. <laughs> yeah. Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy for one who speaks. In a tongue speaks not to men but to God, for no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the Spirit. On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. The one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. Now I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, and unless someone interprets so that the church may be built up. Now, brothers, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I benefit you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching? If even lifeless instruments, such as the flute or the harp, do not give dissonant, distinct noises, notes, how will anyone know what is played? And if the bugle gives an indistinct sound, who will get ready for battle? So with yourselves, if with your tongue you utter speech that is not intelligible, how will anyone know what is said? 
where you will be speaking into the air. There are doubtless many different languages in the world and none without meaning. But if I do not know the meaning of the language, I will be a foreigner to the speaker and to the speaker a foreigner to me. So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, Strive to excel in building up the church. You know, with the lesson. Thanks. Uh, Let's say together the Jubilate on page 15. We'll be joyful in the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be sure that the Lord, he is God, it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. The Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, of the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with that spirit, let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not the Holy Spirit from us. Grant, we beseech you, Almighty God, that we who for our evil deeds do worthily deserve to be punished. By the comfort of thy grace, may mercifully be relieved through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission, and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to this, the beginning of another day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that in all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, the high and mighty ruler of the universe, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favor to behold and bless thy servant, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, and so replenish them with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that they may always incline to do that, thy will and walk in thy way, and do that plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant them in health and prosperity long to live, and finally after this life to attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops, especially Brian, and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, or upon them to continue to do thy blessing. Grant us, O Lord, for the honor of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the Creator and Preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee, for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving help among all nations. More especially, we pray for thy Holy Church, universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in who is afflicted or distressed, 
may the mind, body, or state. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings, and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father, of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, which do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we may show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, make our common supplication unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. In a few moments, we will begin the service of Holy Communion. Let us just take these moments to pray for the world. Lord, this day I pray especially for New York City, for the millions of people that are in that city, and the exponential rate of infection with COVID-19, and the possibility of overwhelming every single bed they have in the city. We ask, Lord God, for your mercy upon that great city, yes. which is my home. I ask, Lord God, that you have mercy upon it, that you would give wisdom to the administrators and to all in authority, and that you would give grace to all persons, helping them, Lord, to isolate patiently, that they would, with good manner, Hold to themselves, Lord God, and slow the rate of infection. Slow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray also, Lord God, for a speedy administration of whatsoever drugs or medications can be applied to the spread of the disease there. We pray also, Lord, for Italy. Yes. And the tragic loss of life that's occurring there. We pray, Lord, that you would hear their prayers, that you would forgive their sins, that they would return unto the Lord their God. And that you would have mercy upon their country. Oh, most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee to succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our parents. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick, prosper the means made use for their cure, and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, 
we may apply our hearts to that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with that spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with that spirit. Let us pray. Collect is taken from the fourth Sunday in Advent. Grant, we beseech the Almighty God that we, who for our evil deeds do worthily deserve to be punished, by the comfort of thy grace may mercifully be relieved through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who hayest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle was written in the fourth chapter of the Epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians, beginning at the 21st verse. <clears throat> Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gender, gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the Spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Here ended the epistle. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him. 
because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples in the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nine, when Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come to him. He saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here with which hath five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet, that should come into the world. Here ended the gospel. Praise to the name of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, white of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall not be. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. I do want to say a few comments. The reading from Galatians um, in that place, Paul, it's very hard for most people to understand what in the world Paul is talking about when he talks about the free woman and the slave woman and Hagar and um, the mountain, etc., etc. But he's reading a passage in the Old Testament um, in a very mystical way to speak about the inheritance that saints have um, in Christ. The point that he's making is simply that we are uh, not slaves under the law, but we have been set free through Christ, and we've been li liberated spiritually. Now, what I want to do is I want to connect this somewhat with the reading from uh, John, Chapter 1, with the, with the feeding of the 5,000, which is also um, a, a, a striking passage. Of course, the miracle itself is, is striking, that Jesus feeds 5,000 5, people with just a few loaves and a few small fishes, which, of course, talks about our own insufficiency. And there is an insufficiency under the law that we have. So if we approach our religion under a, a kind of a legal status, 
I must do this. I must do that. I must go to church. I must do this. I must observe this. I must observe that. And if I'm under the weight of the law, well, then I'm a slave. And all I have is five loaves and two fishes. And I can't feed anybody else with it. I can barely feed myself. But if I transcend that, and Jesus is not talking about doing the way with the law, but transcending it to get it to the heart of it, that we might fulfill it in spirit and in truth. And so if we get to the heart of the law, which is in faith, by faith, we have to remember that Abraham himself was justified before God, before the law ever existed. He was justified before God, by faith. So it's faith that makes us children of Abraham. By faith, we are made children of God. By faith, we live in this new covenant, which is supposed to produce for us interior spiritual freedom. And that is what truly feeds the soul. That has a supernatural, um, uh, unending benefit. That we in our hearts and in our souls, when we feast and dine on Christ alone, and that we have fellowship with him, when we sup with Christ, when we are fed by him, then we have supernatural stores those stores are more important now in a season like this under the crisis that we, we go through. These stores are more important now than ever. Which leads to the question, do we have those stores of supernatural bread to feast upon? Do I have those stores of supernatural bread to feast upon? A little while ago, I wrote an article about the five wise and the five foolish virgins. And the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins went out to meet the bridegroom who was delayed in his coming. And then after some time, the foolish virgins and the wise virgins fell asleep. And then when they heard the sound that the bridegroom was coming, they got up and they trimmed their lamps. But the foolish virgins didn't have enough um, oil in their lamps. And they wanted to get oil from the wise virgins. Give us some of your oil, they said. And the wise ones said, we don't have enough for us and you. You need to go buy some more. And when they left to get more, because they didn't have it, they didn't have the stores, the bridegroom came and took the five wives, and they went into the bridal chamber. And the, the five foolish virgins returned and lost their opportunity. Too late. Too late it was. Too late. Now we find ourselves, many of us, in a situation where we begin to see which lamps are trimmed and have oil and which don't. This is kind of dire. Maybe it is a little upsetting. Maybe it's a little upsetting for you. Maybe you look at it and go, I don't know if I have oil in my lamp. I don't know if I'm a slave of the, uh, 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 a son or a daughter of the slave woman or the free. I don't know if I'm under law or under grace. I don't know if I'm partaking of the spiritual food of Christ that is limitless, or if I don't. Well, here's the thing. If I'm constantly living under the threat of fear and I cannot escape that, then there needs to be a certain kind of surrender. Mm -hmm. If all you have is five loaves and two fishes and you find that it's not enough, then you need to surrender it to Christ. Jesus comes to the disciples and says, what shall we do to feed all of these people? And the disciples say, we have so little. We only have these five loaves and two fishes. It's not enough. And this is our confession. Lord, this is not enough. I don't have enough. I don't have enough to meet this crisis. I don't have enough faith. I don't have enough prayer. I don't have enough faithfulness. Lord, I don't have enough. I don't have enough faith, Lord. Surrender that. Surrender that faith. Surrender what you have. And put it into the hands of Jesus, and then he will multiply it. You know, the feeding of the 5,000 is an incredible miracle, because it's a double miracle. There's a part of the miracle that's entirely, from my perspective, unnecessary. At the end, after all of the people have been fed, they take up 12 basketfuls. Jesus says, take up the basketfuls, lest any should be lost. And they take up 12 basketfuls, more 
than what they put out. They take back after giving more than what they put out. This is what it means to be a son of the slave, uh, uh, of the free woman. This is what it means to be part of the spiritual New Jerusalem. This is what it means to be in Christ and filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what it means to surrender what little we have. Our humanity is small. Our, our capacities to deal with um, difficulties and stresses is small. It's very small. Human beings are small. We're small creatures. We have very limited capacity to deal with stressors and fear and anxiety and worry. Our bandwidth for those things is very, very small. In fact, I'm not sure that we were even created to deal with that very well. I think God created humankind to live in a state of harmony and peace. But the fall interrupted that. And as the fall interrupted that, we found that we became uh, people under slavery, under the bondwoman, so to speak, as Paul is saying. And what we have to do is surrender what little we have so that we become children of the free woman. Again, this is a mystical saying and is referencing the fact that the free woman represents faith, simple, humble faith in Jesus Christ. Let us at this time surrender what little we have. Surrender your fear. Surrender your anxiety. Whether you're anxious about work or whether you're anxious about um, uh, having the spirituality to sustain you during this time, or whether you're anxious for your health or the health of other people, whether you're anxious politically or whether you're anxious about the state of our country or what's going to happen with the economy, whatever it is that you have, you want to surrender it to the hands of Jesus yes. and yes. let him take it into his hands and bless it. And blessing it, he will distribute as, as is needed. And that's when it becomes life-giving. When we retain it and hold on to it, it's no longer life-giving. But when it's uh, when we let go of it and put it into the hands of Christ, it becomes life-giving. And when we do that, basketfuls will be taken back. And you will find that you are being fed through supernatural stores of grace. That everything that you give away comes back to you. Because this is the economy of heaven. Whatever we surrender to God comes back. Whatever we hold on to, we lose. Whatever we surrender, we get back. May God give us the grace at this time to surrender, to surrender what we have. Maybe even surrender our you know, finances and faith to help other people, or our time and faith to help other people, or our position. Let us also surrender our fear, anxiety, our worry, our doubt. And place those into the hands of Jesus so that he can multiply within us supernatural grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ when we said it is more blessed to give than to receive.
Bless, O Lord, this bread that shall become for us the bread of Christ, the body of Christ. Bless, O Lord, this wine it shall become for us the blood of Christ. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept these our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, Set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, addiction, persecution, or any other adversity. Here we pause for a moment and mention the names of those we bear upon our hearts. Scott and Ken, Dorothy, John, Nancy, Gloria, Jane, Sandy, Jeffrey, the city of New York. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life and thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent ye of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life. Following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, join your faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession before Almighty God without kneeling for those at home. You can take this sacrament spiritually, actually. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent 
and are heartily sorry for these endless doings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life for the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Lord Jesus Christ saith to all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Hear what St. John saith: If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with that spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is me the bright so that it is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Most high. All glory be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it instituted and in his holy gospel, command us to continue. A perpetual memory of that is precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits of to us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. 
And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this of sacrifice, of praise, and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service. Not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done. Now. On earth as in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with that spirit. May this man be in God's Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that thou shouldest go under my roof, but speak the word on me, and my soul shall be healed. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for the thou is vouchsafed to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members, incorporated in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works, as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
be with you and remain with you always through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead give life and strength to your mortal bodies through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this live feed of morning prayer and Holy Communion, which we will continue um, until otherwise uh, noted. So thank you for joining us. God bless. Amen.